Hey, my name is Brittany West. I'm a self-published author, and I'm also owner and founder of B Dub Books. I have a bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University in English Literature and Creative Writing. I've also been in the industry for 10 plus years doing writing, editing, um, critique, all of the above. I wanted to start this video series to talk about some of my favorite books and authors and talk about in turn what we can learn from them as writers. So I hope this series can be helpful and enjoyable. First book I wanted to review is my favorite book of all time, which is The Witch of Blackbird Pond. It's written by Elizabeth George Spear, who is an American author who was born in 1908. She died in 1994 and she wrote her books much later in her life. She earned a degree from Smith College and then went on to earn her master's degree from Boston University. So as such, she spent much of her young adult life working and teaching. Then she got married a little bit later in life and had children. So with the demands of raising children, she wasn't quite able to start her career until she was around her 50s. Mrs. Spears seems to focus primarily on historical fiction and um, some of her other titles include Sign of the Beaver and The Bronze Bow, both of which are excellent and I would highly recommend. It centers around a 16 year old girl named Kit who has grown up in Barbados. Uh, with her very wealthy grandfather, so she has lived a very privileged life. Her grandfather has recently passed at the beginning of the book. She had to sell the plantation to settle his debts, and she moved from Barbados to freezing cold Weathersfield, Connecticut, which couldn't be more different. There are also personal reasons that she leaves Barbados to go to Connecticut, and she goes to Connecticut because that is where her Aunt Rachel and her family live, and those are her only living relatives. She experiences a bit of culture shock because uh, the people on Barbados were royalists uh, who were loyal to the crown of England and the people in Connecticut are Puritan who are very strict. Puritans were not big on fun, they didn't believe in a frivolity, they didn't believe in fancy clothes, um, and they certainly did not appreciate the authority of England, all of which were ideals that Kit was raised with. So needless to say, there is quite a bit of friction as she comes to Connecticut and meets her family and interacts with the people in the town. Uh, one of the people she meets is a widow named Hannah Tupper, who is a Quaker and also an outcast in this Puritan dominated society. They become close friends and Kit's friendship is discovered by the townsfolk and eventually she is accused of witchcraft. And I won't tell you how the book ends because I'm a big believer in reading the book to find out what happens for yourself, but needless to say, it is a very, very good story and the ending is wonderful. I highly recommend it. So let's take a look at what Mrs. Spear does really well with regards to this story. First of all, plot. If you want to learn how to write a very smooth, linear plot, read this book. She mixes scenes with Kit, interacting with the townsfolk, interacting with her family, and interacting with Hannah in just a perfect combination to where the plot doesn't move too slowly, it doesn't move too quickly, there's not too much buildup, and there's not too much resolution. The climax is perfect. Um, everything about it is just perfect. She really knows how to move a novel along. The book itself is relatively short, only about 200 pages or so, which just goes to show you, you don't have to have a massive long novel that's 100,000 words to get your point across. Another thing she does really well is context. Now, Mrs. Spear focused primarily on historical fiction, and when you write historical fiction, you have to know your history, and you have to write your history accurately, which involves a lot of research, and clearly she did her research. Um, however, even if you're writing regular fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, you still have to do your research to make your book believable. And everything in this book, down to the clothes they wear, the food they eat, the words they say, the way meetings are set up, it's all done to make you feel as if you have been plunged into Connecticut in 1687, which is exactly how a reader should feel. That's the mark of a good author when they make a reader feel like they've been transplanted into this world. Next, characterization. Um, Mrs. Spear does well characterizing not only individual characters, but also defining their relationships. One perfect example is Kit's relationship with her Uncle Matthew. Uncle Matthew comes off at first as very stern and stoic and unemotional. However, throughout the book, Kit learns more about his life, his background. And by and by, she gains a grudging respect for him and he gains a grudging respect for her. And to achieve that kind of dynamic without being overbearing or describing it too much or pushing it in your face is a really good skill for an author to have. And 
it's one that is really important to develop because realistic characters and realistic relationships are what make a book. They're what make us feel for the characters. They're what make us want to be involved in their lives. So that's something to really practice and work on. Finally, um, one thing, well, probably I think the best thing that Mrs. Spear does with this book is theme. She has really nailed a universal theme, and that is the feeling of loneliness. When Kit comes to this new colony and this new life, she is an outcast. Understandably, she feels a bit lonely, and when she finds Hannah, she kind of finds a kindred spirit. But as we see in the book, that only kind of makes things worse. However, this theme of feeling lonely, feeling like an outcast, um, is universal. Um, one thing I really like that Mrs. Spear does, rather than Kit wallowing in self-pity or worse, giving up and doing what everybody expects her to do, she finds a way to be comfortable in her own skin and reconcile this new lifestyle that she has. She finds a way to have the best of both worlds, so to speak. When I was in college, I read a lot of really bad literature in which a character is faced with a problem and they either give up and wallow in self-pity or they just declare themselves miserable at the end of the book and that's that. Um, I can't stand books like that. Maybe I'm weird, but I don't like stories in which the characters are not redeemed. I like stories in which characters learn to overcome their battles and this book definitely nails that. I think that's why this book speaks to so many people because this gives hope. Um, this book is typically read in middle school classrooms across the United States. I know the first time I read it was when I was in eighth grade and I loved it. And one of the reasons is because <laughs> as an eighth grader, I was a bit of a nerd. I was a bit of an outcast. So this book really spoke to me and I know it speaks to lots of people for that exact reason. So what can we take away as authors? First of all, you have to have a realistic setting. Um, and that involves describing detail that we want to know what your character eats. We want to know what your character does with her free time. We want to know what your character wears. And we want to know those things in detail without being overbearing. There is a limit to the amount of detail you can give. And I think a good author knows how to find the balance between too much detail and too little detail. We need to have relatable characters. One trick I use when I'm writing a scene is I try and put myself into that scene and think, how would I react? to this particular problem. How would I talk to this person if they were talking to me that way? Putting yourself in the character's place can help your characters to speak a little bit more naturally. Thirdly, you've got to have a dynamic between those characters. The, the most repeated writing advice is to write what you know. And that is absolutely true, whether you are a young author who's in their 20s or a very seasoned author who's in their 80s. Um, it doesn't matter. You have to speak from your experience. So if there's a situation you haven't experienced, if you don't know what that situation feels like, talk to somebody who's been in that situation. That's one way to keep a really realistic dynamic in your book. And last but not least, think about universal issues. Think about the things that people deal with on a daily basis. Think about those things that we feel. Um, speak to people's humanity and give your characters some kind of redemption. Help them overcome these feelings of helplessness or loss or despair or being an outcast. Speak to people's need to be reassured. And that's what really defines a very good novel and sets it apart from other novels that aren't so good. And I think that's what Elizabeth George Spear does really, really well. Her characters come full circle, they learn, they grow, they change, and as such, we have a very satisfying ending. So if you haven't read this book, I encourage you to, if you have read this book, I encourage you to read it again with the lens of an author. If you are trying to improve your writing, you will learn lots and lots from Mrs. Spear. She is a wonderful author and I highly recommend her. And with that, I'll sign off. I hope to see you guys next time.